Yosemite National Park is located in the heart of the Sierra Nevada mountain range in central California. On June 30, 1864, a bill was signed by President Abraham Lincoln that created the Yosemite Grant. This would mark the first instance of park land being preserved and set aside specifically by the U.S. government for public use. Yosemite is best characterized by its enormous granite cliffs, its clear water streams, its skyscraping waterfalls, and its extremely tall sequoia trees. It's easy to understand why Yosemite attracts over 4 million visitors every year. The scenery and natural beauty of this place almost feels like it was handcrafted or pulled out of a fairy tale. Oftentimes while riding through the park I felt like I was in a painting. It's almost like my eyes and my brain were telling me that where I was at was too good to be true. The huge valleys formed by the enormous cliffs earned this area the nickname of Big Mouth by the original indigenous people who once lived here. Later the park became known as Yosemite or Killer as translated from one of the dialects of the original tribes that inhabited the area. The crew from Laidlaw's Harley-Davidson set out on a three-day round trip to Yosemite to experience what the park has to offer on two wheels. All right, so we were just checking the weather today and it looks like it's gonna be like 110 degrees going through the Mojave Desert. So you know, we always scramble and go over to the gear section and see what we can find to, to help us out. So we're going with the uh, hydration vest here. This is not a sponsored video by the way, but um, yeah, these hydration vests, we've not, I've never used it personally, but supposedly you soak it in cold water for a long time and then you stick it on and you know, it, it keeps the moisture on you. So. And we're gonna soak these in the, in the tub here. So we got one for me, Nick, and Jamie. So, here's mine, so this works here. Get nice and soaked. All right, number two hydration vest going in. The Nick's. It's not going to be any water left in this bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Soak in that moisture. All right, we'll see how this works. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just be like a dripping mess all over the bikes. So you know, <laughs> I need like a rock to put on top of it or something. All right, we'll see how it goes. We'll look at how the hydration vests work. <laughs> Steve added his vest to the hydration. We got four in there now. One for five. This is a 2X, so this might be a little. Oh, okay, there it is. Let me get another bucket. Let me get another bucket for this one. That bucket's gonna overflow here pretty soon. Dude, the smart people got a vest in that bucket, that's all I gotta say. Oh. I want the sensation all the way through the desert. Press it, press it, soak it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, so Moisture is the essence of wetness, dude. Dude, my big ass blanket soaked up like two gallons of water. <laughs> Throwing it on, Jamie? I think I might. Is it cold, man? Is it working? It's pretty cold. Oh! 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 Yes! Oh! I like it. Something about Matt and the camera and me, you know? No, we can't. He's always there for that opportunity. Yeah. You don't mind me getting a nude shot of you, do you, Jamie? Oh, Jamie! Oh, Jamie. Will we be at the fireworks show? Yeah. Okay. Woo! Let me know how goose Is that does. chilly? Dude, I'm not going to lie. It feels amazing already. Because <laughs> I know what we're in for. Is it cold? Was it cold? No reason, can you send me this video later? <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
The game plan was pretty straightforward, head to Yosemite and have an epic ride. So our group consisted of seven riders from the Laidlaw's Harley-Davidson crew. We all needed to be back to work on Tuesday morning, so we thought we'd knock out some miles Saturday night after work. Try to cut out a little bit early, then lay down as many miles as possible. We were going to head up to Mammoth Lakes, and then the next day on Sunday, head into Yosemite, do a full day in Yosemite, and then on Monday, head home. There's a few different ways to enter into Yosemite. You can either enter in from the east or the west. We decided to enter in from the east, which required us to go up the 395, which is a little bit more of a scenic route than just taking the 5 freeway up there. This also requires us to go through the Mojave Desert, which is located at the southern end of the 395, which entering in right now the tail end of June in the summer, we knew we were going to hit some serious heat. Our first pit stop that we planned on was Kramer Junction, where we'd stop and fuel up. So as luck would have it, as we were headed out of town on the 15 North, we ran into some serious traffic going up the Cajon Pass. This is the same highway that all the Southern California residents head up to Las Vegas for the weekend as well. So we must have been leaving town with all the Vegas people. But traffic's one of those things that you get used to as you live in and around Southern California. So we fortunately were able to split lanes, which is nice for a couple different reasons. One, we were able to get to where we were going a lot quicker. And two, we were reaching about 100 degrees Fahrenheit outside. And so it was nice to be able to keep the bikes moving and keep the wind flowing over the motor. special. Yeah. So the, the windshield does does the job for you. It's working for me, yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Well, Danielle got the, the hose in her tank still. <laughs> Don't show Ned because I slapped him around on this old road tank here. He pulled up and wanted to race me, dude. He tried to get at you on the open get... highway? Oh, dude. Spanked him or what? I'm 100 pounds overweight <laughs> compared to him. But you make up for it in engine size or what? <laughs> I think, mean, yeah, it's easier for my bike to lose weight than for me to lose weight, so. I powered. Nick on the 
New low rider S. Well, relatively new. How's that fairing treating you, Nick? Not bad, not bad. Yeah, it hasn't flown off yet either, so updated part number, I guess, stays on there better. So the vests, we've had them on for about 100 miles. They're pretty much, they're a little bit damp still. Yeah, they're yeah. a little damp, but definitely in the need for like a recharge at this point. <laughs> gotta <laughs> gotta, gotta dunk them. over to the... Uh, I wonder if the gas station has gas like a bathroom. yeah, like a, a dunk station for <laughs> hydration vests. Top off for water. It's cold. Dude, it's 110 degrees out here. We are in Kramer <gasps> Junction. <gasps> water. Look at this guy with the battle for the trail. Huh? Anybody? You got to be somebody to get one of those. Uh, you know who I am. <laughs> you just be some punk off the street. You're negative for COVID, right? Because we're touching tips right now. <laughs> Eric, is that a hydration vest? Yes, sir. Did you did you recharge it at the yes, station? Yes, sir. Right, so I want to make sure everybody stays cool. I dunk mine in All the right. toilet. Can <laughs> <laughs> uh, you pour some sugar on me? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh that's stuck, dude. Oh. Oh, that's money, dude. Oh. Are you good now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Joke's on you. I feel good. Are you, are you good now, Angie? I'm can, good now, can we dude. continue now? We can go. After leaving Kramer Junction, we continue to head up the 395 North. Our next stop would be Lone Pine. This was probably in my top five hottest days experienced on a motorcycle. I think at one point my bike was registering 112 degrees. But the good news is we had plenty of water and we were able to re-soak our hydration vests at the gas stop. And so we were definitely prepared for the heat. And at this point we had pretty much open roads and we had a clear view of open desert vistas. You got a text message? No problems at all. Yeah. You got a text message and you pulled everybody over, huh? Yeah, when your wife tells you please call me ASAP, wouldn't you do the same? It's nice scenery though. How are the bikes running, boys? What's normal? Yeah, they'll get up about 280. Once it gets about 280, it's too hot. Sorry. That's... Hey, hang on. How's the bike running? Killing it. It's a brand new bike. Nice. It's good. Soon enough, the sun started to go down in the sky. This was my favorite stretch of road in the day. The sun was setting, peeking behind the mountains. The heat finally dropping about 10 degrees. The worries of work and life fading away.
If riding a Harley Davidson on the open highway with the sun setting in an open desert landscape doesn't calm your mind, I don't know what will. The setting sun also makes the perfect light to get some awesome shots of the Harley Davidsons rolling down the highway. We made it to Lone Pine, finally cooled off a little bit. Yeah, coming through the Mojave Desert is 110 degrees. Gosh, that was so hot. Yeah, as soon as the sun went behind the mountains, it's like perfect weather now. Super scenic, all the bikes running good as usual. There's gold in them hills. Got about 100 miles left before Mammoth Lakes. Andrew's got his Red Bull, we're good. I got my Red Bull, and what's this you ask? Some bulletproof beef jerky. Oh. Yeah. Or it's teriyaki. That's the, the only way we beef. stay fit, fed on the road. Oh. Only one beef jerky can feed us, and that's bulletproof beef jerky. Literally bulletproof. We shot one. Hi, Daddy? Yeah. Well, you are Daddy. Oh. Mm. Bulletproof jerky. Good looking out. Oh, Nick still jerky. rocking the hydration vest. Lifesavers, Nick. Lifesaver. I like this vest. This is a good vest. Nick is going to go ahead and take full credit for the entire team getting their hydration vests on. No one had any ideas. We no didn't one's know how owned we're make one it. of these, except for we're going to ignore that Eric already owned one. We'll pretend that Eric didn't have one already. Yeah, and then we're just going to say, yeah, that it's I'm responsible for everyone else's good decisions. Lifesaver. Lifesaver. It was quickly getting dark and I made the tactical blunder of not getting dinner early enough. As we made our way into these small towns, everything was closing at 8 or 9 o'clock. We made our way into Bishop and went to three different restaurants that turned us away because they were closing. Never in my entire life have I been more grateful to step foot into Denny's. Alright, so it was getting late and we stopped off here in Bishop at uh, this fine establishment of Denny's. They're the only restaurant that's open at 9 o'clock at night. So, had a little uh, dinner. We're gonna head the rest of the way into, where are we going again? Mammoth, going into Mammoth. One of the things we were all looking forward to when we got to the hotel was jumping in the spa <laughs> and warming up. And we get it in, it's like a freaking ice bath in here. It's, you got the bubbles going, but it's very deceiving because it's like, we're like, shit, we all have goosebumps. It's like freezing out here. So, yeah, big disappointment. We're at the uh, Sierra Nevada Resort and Spa. And, um, yeah, they're, uh, they're trying to save on their, their electricity bill out here, gas bill, whatever. Starting off day two here. bike already looking nice. Eric's bike looks brand new still for whatever reason. Oh Danielle's bike looks like she actually rides. Alright, today is the good day. Yesterday was Get survived. Crazy. Get there. Get Get their day. Yeah, survived through the blast furnace day. Yeah. How's Nick's bike looking at? Nick looks like he rides.
Joshua trees had turned into pine trees, the weather was cooling down, and we could definitely smell Yosemite. Like I said, we were going to enter in from the east side, which is the side less traveled. We were going to take a road, Highway 120, Tioga Road, that I've never personally been on, but I heard it's a beautiful, epic road, and it definitely did not disappoint. But we would take this road into the heart of Yosemite Valley, and then exit on the west side, down out the Highway 41. After turning left onto Highway 120 and heading west, it became immediately apparent that we were headed towards some amazing landscapes. We could see the start of what would be Yosemite's signature granite cliffs in the distance. Hidden away in the Sierra Nevada mountain range, Yosemite is one of the gems of California and one of the most popular national parks in the United States of America. Yosemite has an enormous amount of preserved land. There are several roads that go over the Sierra Nevada mountain range, many of which a lot of people will never experience. Most visitors come in from the west side via the Highway 41. Tioga Pass is one of these roads that a lot of visitors to Yosemite never get to experience. I'm definitely glad we shot up the 395 to experience this road, because it definitely had some of the best views of the entire trip. So when COVID hit, they started using a reservation system to limit the amount of people that comes into Yosemite. I think it's like 1,500 people or something like that. Uh, anyways, there's this huge line just to get into the park now. I'm assuming it's just backup of people trying to scan their passes and everything, but yeah, they say that it could be like an hour to three hours just to get in here. Um, we made a reservation like a week ago it's like buying a pair of Jordans on the opening day or something like you got to jump in there and like buy a ticket as quick as possible like the second they become available so yeah kind of crazy man yeah so we're just sitting in line right now waiting Andrew tried to split lanes up ahead so I don't know if he got it or not but yeah Andrew and Danielle went up there and who knows but yeah this is pretty lame you need to scan passes quicker this place is beautiful though Andrew, did you try to lane split the line? No, I was just letting you guys wait for me in line. And okay. then I pulled up and parked because I'm not an a-hole.
Highway 120 weaves its way through a bunch of different mountain ranges and valleys. You climb to higher altitudes, the topography changes. Next, you'll find yourself weaving along a two-lane highway with huge sequoia trees on either side, only for it to open up into some grand valley where you have huge, vast landscapes. The occasional tunnel is cut into the granite hillside as well, creating some pretty unique and awesome roads to ride your motorcycle on. We're headed down to 120 now. We're almost to Yosemite Valley. Stopped off here on the side of the road. Cinnamon, sweet cinnamon, uncured bacon jerky. That's Amazing. really the only jerky you can eat if you're on the bike. On the road. Oh, 100%. Yeah, not only that. Proof for nothing. It comes with a handy dandy. Oh, there you go. Nice. Crafted. That's so convenient. Mm -hmm. They thought everything with that jerky. Tastes good. We began our descent into Yosemite Valley, which is where 70% of the visitors will spend all their time in Yosemite. The valley floor is home to some of the most iconic landmarks in the national park. Rock formations like El Capitan and Half Dome are just a couple that grace the park's skyline. When you reach the heart of Yosemite Valley, you'll definitely know it. You have 360 degree views of sheer granite cliffs. And if you look close enough, you'll see these epic waterfalls pouring off the tops of these cliffs with seemingly no water source. Then when you glance down at the valley floors, you've got streams running right down the center of it. It reminds me of one of my favorite all-time movies, A River Runs Through It. Once you hit Yosemite Valley, everything makes sense. You totally can understand why everyone comes from around the world to visit this national park. It's almost like God wanted to see how much nature goodness he could cram into one place. You seriously have every imaginable feature to make up the most mountainous alpine terrain possible. If you're planning a trip here, you definitely want to come in the summer. Otherwise, you better bring your Pan America because there's going to be plenty of snow on the ground. Although we didn't have much time to do any hiking, there are some amazing hikes that I'd love to come back and do sometime. The famous Half Dome hike, which is 10 miles in and 10 miles back. You do need a permit to do that hike. There's plenty of waterfall hikes, and there's also the famous Glacier Point hike. This is definitely a place I want to come back and experience it in a little bit different way. Although riding a motorcycle through it will always be number one on my list. We started to get a bit hungry, so we decided to stop off at Curry Village, which is on the east side of Yosemite Valley. Riding a motorcycle benefit 363, no matter how crowded a parking lot may be, there's always enough room to squeeze an extra motorcycle or two in there. We found a lonely Honda Goldwing, so we decided to make friends, because after all, you always meet the nicest people riding a Honda. When we were originally planning the trip, we had also planned on going through the Sequoia National Park on the same day we rode through Yosemite. About this time of the day when we were sitting down to eat lunch, we decided it was a little bit too overly ambitious of us. So we decided to take our time a little bit more in Yosemite, enjoy our time here, and skip Sequoia National Park altogether, which turned out to be a good idea because had we gone through the Sequoias, we would have arrived at our hotel extremely late. And I'm all about not wasting time and missing opportunities, but at the same time, you want to enjoy your trip. And we felt like we'd be pushing ourselves too hard to try to hit both of the national parks in one day.
Our hydration vests were drying up and we were starting to get hot again. Andrew said he wanted to go for a dip in the river. At this point, the next road we were going to go down, Highway 41, was going to lead us out of the park. But before we did that, we wanted to take one last stop at Tunnel View, which is an elevated lookout that gives us a nice vantage point of Yosemite Valley. Then we'll head through the tunnel that the view is named after, which is the longest granite tunnel in the United States. tunnel here that leads to the 41. So we're basically up at Tunnel View is what they call this lookout point. They call it Tunnel View because it's right before this big long tunnel and this is like one of the best views you can get in the park. We're gonna head into Visalia tonight so we got a couple hundred miles in front of us still. From here we took the 41 south, which is a long, windy, scenic highway through the pine trees. We made our way into Viacelia where we stopped for the night. Then the next day we rode back into Los Angeles area. To me, Yosemite will always represent one of the ultimate riding destinations in California. It wasn't the most pleasant journey getting there. The heat was absolutely brutal getting to and from Yosemite. But sometimes you have to push through those uncomfortable times out on the road to get the amazing life experiences on the other end. Yosemite was incredible and one of those trips I'll always remember. Maybe it's just the sheer size of everything, the vast valleys, the amazing vistas, the windy roads that wind through the valleys and the mountains, the rock granite faces that surround you, the waterfalls coming from the clouds, the meadows with the thousand-year-old sequoia trees. The only thing I know for sure is, it's best experienced on two wheels. 